Welcome back to PostMaster Channel. In this video, we will walk you throughout the configuration process for the PostHVN 6.2 KP and the PostHVN 11 KP all in one solid inverters, so you can complete the setup according to your specific requirements. First, from the main screen, press and hold the Enter key to enter the setting menu. Then you can navigate throughout the items, use the up and down keys. Setting 0 is used to exceed the setting mode. Press Enter to exceed the setting mode. Re-enter the setting menu to continue the configuration. Setting 1 configures the output source priority. This controls priority in which the inverter supplies power from solar, grid, and battery. If you select SUB, solar power is prioritized. When solar power is insufficient, grid power will be used simultaneously, while the battery will only be used when both solar and grid are unavailable. If you select SBU, solar power still has priority, but when solar is insufficient, the battery supplements the load. Grid power will only be used when battery voltage is low or both battery and solar are unavailable. SUB mode minimizes battery usage, keeping it as a backup for energy security. YSBU mode reduces grid power usage to maximize solar energy consumption. Setting 2 defines the maximum total charging current. Including both PV and grid charging, the inverter will not exceed this limit when charging. Setting 3 sets the AC input voltage range. APL standards for appliance mode, which allows an input voltage range of 90 to 280 volt. UPS standards for uninterruptible power supply mode, which allows an input voltage range of 170 to 280 volt. A wider range accepts a less stable AC input, while a narrow range helps stabilize the inverter's AC output. Setting 4 is for power inverter setup. You must turn off the power switch first and complete the configuration before the unit fully shuts down. For a single unit operation, keep the default single setting. For a single phase power operation, set each unit to PAL. For three phase power connection, units connected to L1 phase set to 3P1, units connected to L2 phase set to 3P2, units connected to L3 phase set to 3P3. Setting 5 selects the battery type. Options include AGM battery, fluid latency battery, user defined option. LIA is used for automatic recognition of lithium battery communication protocols. PYL is designed for lithium batteries with building pylon tech protocol compatibility. TQF is designed for lithium batteries with building TAC5 protocol compatibility. GRO is designed for lithium batteries with building GrowWatch protocol compatibility. LIB is only a reserved option. LIC is used to user defined custom protocols. If USE is selected, you can manually configure setting 24. 26, 27, 29, and 61. Setting 6 enables or disables auto restart after over voltage shutdown. When the battery voltage returns to normal, the inverter restarts automatically. Setting 7 enables or disables auto restart after overheating. Once the internal temperature drops back to safe range, the inverter restarts. Setting 8 enables or disables power saving mode. When operating on battery power with low loads, the inverter suspends output to conserve energy. Setting 9 sets the output frequency to either 50 Hz or 60 Hz. Setting 10 sets the output voltage to 220 V, 230 V, or 240 V. 
Setting 11 configures the maximum grid charging current. If the value exceeds that in setting 2, the inverter will use the limit set in setting 2. Setting 12 defines the battery low voltage point at which the inverter switches from battery to grid power. Setting 13 defines the battery recovery voltage for switching from grid back to battery power. Setting 16 determines the charging source priority. SNU means solar and grid. Both solar and grid power are used together. OSO means grid power is never used, regardless of solar availability. CSO means grid charging is only enabled when solar power is unavailable. Setting 18 enables or disables the buzzer alarm function. Setting 19 control whether the display auto returns to main screen. ESP means the system returns to the main screen after one minute of inactivity. TEP means the display remains on the last operated screen. Setting 20 enables or disables the backlight. Setting 22 controls the buzzer alert when output source priority is blocked. For example, in SBU mode, if solar and battery are both insufficient and grid power is used instead, an alarm will sound. Setting 23 enables the overload bypass function. When overload occurs in battery mode, the inverter automatically switches to grid power. Setting 24 defines the battery low voltage warning threshold. If battery voltage drops below this and no other power source is available, a warning will be triggered. In SBU mode, the inverter will switch to grid power. This setting only configurable when battery type is set USE. Setting 25 enables or disables the fault code recording feature. Which can be viewed via connection to an upper computer. Setting 26 to 29 are voltage threshold used only when battery type is set to USE. Setting 26 sets the block charging voltage. Setting 27 sets the flow charging voltage. Setting 28 resets the inverter to factory defaults when set to on. Setting 29 sets low cutoff voltage. If the battery is only power source and the voltage falls below this threshold, the inverter will shut down. Setting 30 enables or disables equalization charging intended for fluid or user-defined battery types. It helps address chemical imbalance issues in legacy batteries, such as electrolyte stratification and sulfation. By using controlled high voltage charging to stir the electrolyte and restore plate activity, this extends battery life and maintains capacity. Not recommended for cell batteries like AGM or GEL. Setting 31 sets the equalization voltage. Setting 33 sets the equalization duration. Setting 34 sets the equalization timeout extension if the target voltage is not reached. Setting 35 sets the equalization frequency, determining how often the equalization process occurs. Setting 36 manually start or stop equalization immediately. Setting 37 enables BMS communication. When the lithium battery type is selected, setting 38 to 41 become configurable. Setting 38 sets the SOC threshold for auto shutdown to protect the battery. Setting 39 sets the SOC threshold to switch from battery power to grid power. Setting 40 sets the SOC threshold to return to the battery mode. Setting 41 sets the minimum SOC required for inverter operation. Setting 43 configures solar priority for either charging or load supply. Setting 44 enables PV feed into grid. Only activate if complete with local regulations. 
unauthorized use may result in serious safety or legal issues. Consult a certified professional before activation. Setting 45 recess PV generation data, including daily, monthly, yearly, and total production. Settings 46 and 47 define grid charging start and stop times. These can be used to avoid charging during high electricity rates periods, ensuring grid power is only used during cost-effective time windows when solar is insufficient. Settings 48 and 49 defines the bypass output time range, limiting when grid power can supply loads. Unlike settings 46 and 47, which apply to charging, these apply to load supply. Setting 50 allows selection of country-specific standards, which configure acceptable grid voltage and frequency ranges for a compliant grid tie operation. Settings 51 to 55 set a real-time clock, minute, hour, day, month, and year. Setting 56 sets the grid tie current. Setting 57 is only a reserved option. Setting 58 sets the grid input power. Setting 60 enables or disables the dual AC output. Setting 61 and 62 configure shutdown threshold for second AC output. When battery voltage or SOC drops below the set point, the second output is disabled to ensure stable operation of the first AC output. Setting 63 and 64 defines the recovery thresholds for the second output. Setting 65 configures discharge duration for the second output line if thresholds in setting 61 or 62 are not met. The second output remains off. Setting 66 sets the delay time for recovery of the second output after reaching the voltage or SOC threshold. This helps prevent frequent switching and improve system stability. Setting 67 and 68 define start and stop times for secondary output operation. That covers all the configuration options for the PoHBN 6.2 kP and PoHBN 11 kP all-in-one solar inverters. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.